after inoculation are quite common, even in vaccines that are not meant for COVID-19. This reminder comes after the agency recorded at least 13 cases of side effects. Wala sa kanilang na-admit, lahat sila ay inobserbahan, minanage, at after a while, they were all sent home. After the ceremonial vaccination program on Monday, the government admits there's still a lot more to be done to increase vaccine confidence among Filipinos. We have constantly uh, work hard to increase vaccine confidence, mm. especially among our healthcare workers who are the top priority in this vaccination effort. Nakita namin siya ngayon, tumaas po yung ano, yung uh, nung nakita lang nagpabakuna tayo lahat ng, ano, ng mga, mga prominent na mga doctors na nandun si Dr. Gap, Dr. Edsel uh, Salbanya. Uh, tumaas po yung, ano, tumaas po yung, yung level ng uh, natawag nating uptake at saka demand. The government has detected local cases of the South African COVID-19 variant a day after it rolled out its vaccination drive with donated Sinovac doses from the Chinese government. Are the emergence or the, is the emergence of variants caused by the delay in the vaccinations? Meanwhile, the DOH says the South African variant is more contagious, but it has yet to know the efficacy of Sinovac against the viral mutation. How will the high transmissibility of the variant impact vaccine efficacy and strategies? We discuss in this episode of The Chiefs. Uh, welcome to this Tuesday edition of The Chiefs. With us, of course, tonight in the studios, Robbie Alampay of One News. And then joining us online is Luci Cruz Valdez, the head of News 5. And perhaps in a little while, uh, Ana Marie Paminton of the Philippine Star. Mm. Luci and Robbie, happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Good evening, and mm. Robbie. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Day two of the vaccination drive. Uh, I wonder how it is now with PGH. Uh, and, uh, and they finally distributed the vaccines to Sano, uh, uh, besides in Mindanao. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yeah. Well, PGH and Dr. Erbosa said yesterday, diba, that they expect more PGH more, to yeah, yeah. Ah, vaccinated ah. today. Ah. So let's check whether let's that's check right. Let's check with our primary source. Uh, <laughs> 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 Doesn't get better than this. Yeah. Talagang primary source. We are now joined by PGH Director Dr. Gerardo Gap Legaspi. Doc Legaspi, Doc Gap, uh, thank you for joining us and welcome to the Chiefs. Yeah, good, evening, you, good, evening, good, good evening, Doc. Oh, uh, una, una po, congratulations for being the first uh, legally vaccinated uh, Filipino <laughs> <laughs> against COVID-19. <laughs> you have to emphasize legally vaccinated. Eh. Uh, how does it feel to be historic in that sense? <laughs> well, well uh, I, the first time I heard about it, I, I told my son, uh, no, ako yung first na legal, mabakunahan, sabi niya, yes, legally. Because I mean, now now, kayo by by four months or five months, I don't know. So, what is it? What is it? What is it? Number forty-six. What is it? Number fifty. No, but but it was really uh, well. It it didn't hit me until it happened. Uh, mm. I mean, uh, I, I, there was a sequence of or there was a, actually the IATF uh, wanted uh, for a long time to have uh, Dr. Jonas Del Rosario. Mm. As a person, as a true symbol, no? I, I don't know if you knew, knew his story. Yes, you know yes. His story. yeah. Mm. Knows his story. So, yes. Uh, ako lahat kami agree, but fortunately, uh, there's no data of uh, Sinovac on uh, on those who have who had COVID already. Mm -hmm. So oh, we yeah. want yeah. to mm -hmm. model the date, the already confusing data. So we told him. Yeah. Well, well, Doc, because guest namin kagabi si Doc Ted Herbosa, and we were talking about yung vaccine confidence and how a lot of people are looking to our doctors now for guidance and for good examples, or for examples basically of uh, whether or not to trust these vaccines. Um, and of course, we there were also some concerns earlier na dahil sino ba yung unang ibabaku na sa mga medical frontliners, eh, baka umatras yung iba. Eh, si Doc Doc Herbosa kahapon no saying na mukha namang ano, mukhang uh, nagkakaroon ng bandwagon effect. Uh, what are the numbers today? Uh, dun sa PGH. Uh, are there think, more people getting listed? Yeah, I think to appreciate it better, I, let me just take a few seconds to... Uh, <clears throat> initially, uh, before we anyone even knew what vaccine it was, I told uh, the PGH community, let's just take whatever FDA will approve. So mm -hmm. we didn't know what was, that was January 18. 
our survey uh, uh, gave us a 75%, 76% acceptance of any vaccine. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when the, we were told that we were going to get Pfizer, we registered everyone face to face. We re pre registered 5,700 uh, employees so, and personnel and consultants and doctors uh, and uh, students. And 94% yeah. was the acceptance. That's, well, no? mm -hmm. And then, you <laughs> know, Sinovac, the, parang uh, naging 10% na lang ang uh, wow. So, wow. it was really a big blow. Uh, but, uh, but uh, you know, the, the, our team was really bent on, uh, you know, uh, taking the next big leap towards fighting this uh, virus. So, and we all agreed that it's uh, the vaccine. No? Mm -hmm. So, nevertheless, we... Um, we uh, still uh, try to convince as many people as we can. You, you knew about the negative uh, uh, comments and the, uh, the uh, protestations against it. And uh, we had a town hall meeting last Saturday and uh, attended by all the experts and DOH uh, uh, officials. And I think it had a good effect also. Hmm. It improved 12% uh, to around 14 Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. It, okay, it so was, yesterday there was 150. I mean, that yeah. was the number. So today, how many more actually got themselves vaccinated? Yeah, yesterday, we expected 50 to come. Uh, 128 came actually and got vaccinated. Okay, mm. all right. Okay. We had 480 who got, uh, who got vaccinated. Today? Wow. The, the, so, okay. okay. So that, Doc, I'm curious about no nag town hall kayo, no? because uh, yeah. as, as people keep saying, look, uh, the frontliners will still have the option. It's up to them if they want to take it or not. Uh, on the other hand, all eyes are on the doctors. You're the only ones that people trust right now. All the surveys show, yung doctors, yung nurses, yan, paniniwala ang ko yan if they take it. So I'm just curious because I, I remember no nag start yung ano, when PGH became a COVID hospital. You had this open le your letter to your to the staff, which was really yeah. rousing, really inspiring, really showed leadership, um, yes. and gave a message. I was I'm wondering in the town hall, what was your message uh, to the PGH community? Well, I think my message was everyone else's uh, message that uh, the best vaccine that we will have is the vaccine that we can get first, uh, and that uh, uh, we trust the people who, uh, uh, who uh, say that it's a good vaccine. So mm. that's a basic message. I think what was miscommunicated, uh, which didn't come out with that, the first time it was announced, was that uh, it was still voluntary. Mm. I think that's where the uh, problem came. And it was, it was well um, uh, clarified during that uh, uh, town hall meeting. It was voluntary and that you don't lose your place in the prioritization. I mm. think when they heard about that, uh, they there was a bit of uh, uh, more understanding. And more so when uh, DOH announced that the uh, AstraZeneca vaccine was coming on Monday or something like that. Oh, mm. yeah. Mm. That's right. So, yeah. <laughs> lahat, no? May choice naman. <laughs> ang, oh, I, think, uh, I think the message there was, may choice naman pala. Yeah. Ah. Uh, but, oh, but, but, but right. yeah, as, as the leader of PJH, or for that matter, as the community, were you conscious? Is there that pressure also knowing that, look, this is the first step. And if we stumble and if we show any hesitation in this, what message are we sending the public with regards to any vaccine? Were you, was, was that a factor in your decision and in your actions as well? Yes, I think uh, it, um, ever since I became director, I think what, the one thing I noticed that, uh, you know, uh, the, the community, the public is looking at PGH for things mm. to believe. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, innovations, uh, treatment, etc., new knowledge. So I guess uh, just like in the COVID center, you know, we, 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 we had some innovations or some revelations in the management of COVID that we shared. And I guess that's how the, the role of PGH has evolved in this crisis and, and this vital part <laughs> Is a big pressure actually on on uh, on PGH because it was pivotal to vaccine acceptance. You know? If PGH doesn't accept it, who will? Who will? Uh, you know? Who will? So the, I, I must uh, confess that uh, I think any leader will have that pressure on him because um, you are leading uh, five thousand people. You don't know how many really agree with you, 
but you know as an as a as a um, an integral part of that uh, of PGH that's its role it has it's the role that we have to to uh, take in this particular moment so the, it was really difficult it was like covid referral center all over again uh, for, can, for can, yeah no can you enlighten us on uh, some of the major reasons why pgh doctors are hesitant about Sinovac. Uh, Dr. Danz, when he guested here, uh, had mentioned the lack of an HTAC approval, no? which yes. was supposed to be the next phase of approval after the EUA. Yes. No? So, uh, but, but apart from that, what other reasons would be the PGH doctors have for refusing to be vaccinated with Sinovac? I think I mentioned this and I think uh, with all honesty, I'll, I'll repeat it again. It's the things attached to the uh, source of Sinovac. What, what do you mean by that? <clears throat> At some point, my assessment, it's not anymore the vaccine, but where it came from, uh, how it's getting here, you know, those issues. Uh, there's no clarity how Mm -hmm. how uh, we even got this deal. So those are the, the, the non-scientific part of this vaccine, actually, mm -hmm. from, my, from my interpretation of what's yes. happening. Mm -hmm. Clouded kasi, oh, nga, dok. the kasi, uh, image of the vaccine. And kasi, it is unfortunate, really. That's why one of the messages that we sent during the town hall, and other scientists also, is that we, we separate that from all of this. No? Kung galit ka sa PJ's director, Huwag kang magalit sa vaccine. Kung galit ka sa gobyerno, huwag kang magalit sa vaccine. Kung galit ka sa China, huwag kang magalit sa vaccine. Hanggat di mo naintindihan, hindi natin na i-imbibe yung, yung kanyang scientific evidence. So I guess um, only after we've done that, then it, it, we can have more, uh, even better acceptance after uh, we evaluate the scientific data. I think it has to do with that. Yeah. So is it safe to say that uh, you, Dr. Gapli Gaspi, as a part of the scientific community, believe that Sinovac is, well, highly effective and if safe. I, yeah, well, just like you and me, our access to data is what is, uh, uh, well, most of people, their access to data is in the, uh, what they see in the papers or in, in social media. Uh, we have a little bit more of an exclusive access to some data because right. a lot of the doctors who work on vaccine, these vaccines are from PGH. So, you know, over some uh, conversations, I get first-hand yes. information. So I base it on that. I base it on that. I base it on the fact that it's an inactivated uh, virus that mm -hmm. has other proteins that we can uh, have an uh, antibody reaction to, which is not only the spike protein that the mRNA uh, vaccines or the viral vaccines have. No? Um, it doesn't contain polyethylene uh, glycolate or uh, polysorbate. That, that is the key factor in anaphylactic reactions or allergic reactions. No? Mm -hmm. So I think this, uh, when you're talking about efficacy and safety, these are two factors that are centerpiece in, in when you discuss them. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that was probably uh, on a scientific basis, really not, which is probably also Dr. Dances, and I respect him very much in this in this aspect, is uh, you know the uh, the um, scarcity of published data. Yeah, mm -hmm. lang, mm -hmm. talaga. Oh, yeah. But otherwise, if you draw a, a table, lamang ang sino bak eh, oh, mm -hmm. para sa and the longer I look at the table, the longer I believe <laughs> okay. uh, the, that it, it could be uh, more superior. Okay. Doc, as, as pivotal, as historic, as important as the first two days of vaccination was, it's still a very, very small sample in a very controlled campus, very controlled community, easy to organize in a way uh, relative to what we know we will have to undertake on a national level as we scale this up uh, immeasurably. Uh, despite that, as, as small as that sample is and, and that uh, first uh, wave is, what are some quick lessons na kayo mismo nakita nyo na, nako, pagka rin all out natin to, we had better be ready for, for these kinds of little things, the devil's in the details as it were. 
uh, what did you observe and what can you pass on even at this early stage? Well, actually the work got better with Sinovac mm. <laughs> compared really? to Pfizer. Oh. The, How is that? The Pfizer is, you know, the Pfizer vaccine, we really had to re reconfigure our pharmacy uh, mm. uh, cold, sto cold, uh, cold storage. storage. Yeah. We had to teach a lot of our nurses on how to handle the vials. No? We had to source out syringes that uh, you know, will make us get more dosages from the... It was really more complex. You cannot move it, you cannot shake it because it will get deactivated. I can so ah, okay. Oh, cannot, do you know how does that work? You cannot... Uh, uh, yung, uh, okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, deactivate yun, no? Uh, it cannot be in a temperature above 25 degrees once mm. it's out of the uh, for a long time. So it was a nightmare, really. It was really a nightmare. And then we have to finish it in uh, five days. Five days. Because oh. it, after throwing it out. No? So that's a thousand vaccinations a day for our 5,000 workers. No? And then Sinovac came or any other vaccine that is two to eight degrees uh, storage. Uh, one vial per one vial per uh, vaccine with one syringe, and uh, and then uh, it, you can shake it, you can drop it, you can uh, put it in the you know in uh, 29 degrees. Mm. So it became actually easier for us uh, logistics wise. No? Mm. But of course, uh, still the the process of sterility and and uh, and uh, proper handling are still there, but then it's not as challenging as the yeah. Pfizer vaccine that we uh, had a simulation uh, um, uh, exercise for a few days also. So, I interesting details, no? Para oh, AK-47, eh? Oh, yes, we did it. I know. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> ibig sabihin niya, pagka tinan, ibig sabihin niya, I mean, I don't know, but, but uh, I, I imagine that that is particularly sensitive after it is uh, thawed out, no? But does yeah. that mean that during transport, malubak yung ay <laughs> 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 malubak yung malubak yung truck na nagtransport. Eh, eh, may ano? I mean, is it is it that sensitive? Yun ang yun ang uh, you know, hindi naman pero <laughs> it's maybe the uh, uh, not the whole package but in a vial. When the vial mm. is uh, shaken, so when we when you it's really a very uh, controlled motion when you mm. uh, when you try to. Uh, uh, Unsettle the 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 vaccine inside the bottle before asper, uh, adding diluent to it. No? So, mm -hmm. so hindi naman parang uranium yan, no? Na matagtag lang eh, sa sabog na. Nitroglycerin. 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 Ang pressure pa nun, there are only 55,000 uh, that, that were going to arrive for 55,000 healthcare workers. So each one had to really count. No? Mm -hmm. In the mm -hmm. Right. Uh, in the Sinovac, in the Coronavac, it's uh, uh, 500, so it's 250,000 healthcare workers that will get it. No, because 600,000, 500,000 healthcare workers, I think 100,000 military and yes. uh, police. You know? So mm -hmm. there are more, there are more. It was easier to handle, uh -huh. there were more. You can have leeway for mistake, no? It may be mm -hmm. uh, lose a bottle here or there. <laughs> but yes. um, but of course, we were not going to do that. But you know, the the nurses uh, gave a big sigh of relief oh. yeah, when when uh, we got it. Because in the Linggo, the airport, the yung, yung pangulo, kung wala niyang bote ng sinabak, tawos mo kang inalog eh. So okay lang yun. Uh. <laughs> 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 kung, 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 well, because he was showing it in the photo, eh. He was showing it. Eh. <laughs> anyway, we have another one coming to the Philippine star joining us. Good evening, doctor. On the other hand, doctor, marami pa rin mga health workers na ayaw pa rin kang nag-aalala pa rin dyan sa shot na yan, especially because tatlo pa lang naman yung ano na ina-approbahan ng 2-4 emergency use. Eh. That's Pfizer, that's Moderna, and uh, 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 no, no, not, not uh, uh, Pfizer, the AstraZeneca made by South Korea, and the Covishield made by the Serum Institute of India, no? So sa sa ano nga sa Marikina nag-back out daw yung 1000 health workers at gusto nila maghintay. Sa tingin niyo ba paano ko matagalan yan mukhang nagkaka-problema sabi ng World Health Organization. Yeah. Kaka problema daw sa supply. Sa tingin niyo gaano katagal yung reasonable na paghihintay ng mga health workers natin especially in the 
COVID referral centers, baka mamaya mga third quarter na magdatingan ng mga yan. Sa tingin yeah. nyo, ano yung major reasonable wait? One day is already too late for us now. <laughs> no, I think I think that's the way we should think now. Yeah. Uh, the numbers are going up. I think it's it's undeniable. The numbers are going up. We were celebrating three weeks ago. We had 58 uh -huh. uh, patient COVID patients in the hospital, and then three weeks later we're up to 90 again, no? or 89. No? So, um, and you talk to the LGUs, you talk to the uh, other COVID hospitals. Uh, the numbers are going up, so I guess I guess it's really time to mount another defense. Uh, we've so far done a good job. We know our infection rate in the hospitals are low because of the protocols, but people are getting tired. Uh, you know, people are getting uh, you know, uh, uh, careless uh, because uh, of the normalcy that uh, everything has uh, given a false sense of normalcy. You know? So I, I guess. Um, if ever, uh, I, that's that's why I think one day is already too late. But having said that, we, um, as long as we are able to slow down the spread with the health protocols, maybe we've, we've held out for 10, 11 months already. You know, maybe uh, we can have maybe another two weeks or a month that, uh, if we are able two to... Two weeks or a month. Yeah. But hindi pa kayo nag-aalala with the arrival here of the reported arrival here of the South African variant. Paano kung hindi pala effective yan? And here we are, we're all complacent. Siguro meron na akong konting immunity dito. And baka, baka, baka magkaroon ng uh, a bit of carelessness. Hindi naman carelessness kaya lang. A bit of uh, overconfidence. Yes. Out of that, immunization protection. Hindi ba delikado mangyari? Yeah, I think uh, that's one of the uh, um, side events that we have to uh, manage also. Uh, is to con just like you know when when we give PPEs to to uh, healthcare workers, you still remind them that there are other steps that they have to take because this one this will not protect you completely. You know? Just yeah. like the vaccine, uh, it might protect you, but it will not protect your family because you can still harbor the uh, the mm. Uh, mm. virus in your nasal passages and still transmit it. You know? It doesn't sterilize. The, uh, the person from uh, a viral uh, contamination. Mm. It only removes its, uh, the, the uh, clinical reaction to it, at least to a severe uh, uh, condition. So I think, uh, and you're right, I agree that the vaccine might put us in a false sense of security and, uh, and maybe make things worse. No? Mm. Um, in yeah. fact, when I t t tested positive in last April uh, 7, the first thing I asked our infection control unit head is, pwede na ba akong pumunta sa ward na hindi naka-PPE? Pero Doc, speaking of, ano, and, and we'll repeat that because that's something that we kept asking. Na pagka na bakunahan ka na, pwede ka pa rin mag-transmit. You can still carry the virus in you. Yes. You could still yes. transmit it to somebody else. No? Yeah. Uh, the other thing I, I want to know, so ano po yung protocol? Halimbawa, dyan sa ospital, halimbawa kayo, naturukan na kayo, and yung mga doctors and nurses, what's the protocol? They just show up the next day as if it's just another work day? Or do they need some time uh, to isolate at home? Uh, what, ano po ba yung immediate instructions? So right after the vaccination, they get a sticker in their paper. If it's green, they, they wait for 15 minutes. Uh, observation, if it's yellow, they stay for 30 minutes. If it's red, you stay for one hour. So be based on your risks. So. Mm. And then when you go, you bring home a piece of paper and all the instructions are there. There's a QR code. Uh, you uh, at, In the evening or the next day, you uh, answer the questions in that QR code and then it's relayed to us and the DOH. So. And then there are people who, uh, uh, there are hotline uh, numbers that we give. And, uh, surpri and, and surprisingly, no one... Uh, took off. Uh, I mean, no one got absent from work. Uh, mm. I didn't get any report of anyone getting absent. So uh, it's really less, uh, I mean, um, for this vaccine, I think uh, it's uh, business as usual the next day. It was business as usual for me this morning. No? Mm. I was up. Pero anong, anong nakuha mo? Red ka ba? O yellow? Green ba? So wala, wala kang naramdaman kahit ano? <laughs> Lang, wala, wala talaga. So, uh, hmm. so most, uh, I think if I may share, uh, there was one fever, uh, one uh, redness in the injection site, 
four that were sore after, uh, three that were had muscle pain uh, at home, uh, one had a migraine, uh, one had some dizziness, but all uh, didn't require medical attention. So, doc, doc, serious question. We asked this, uh, I think, last week. To, no, we didn't necessarily know. Pero yung mga nauna sa inyong magpabakuna, no, na hindi natin alam if what they got was real or or, or not. Or diba? liquid Viagra. And, placebo na lang. Oh, well, let's say, hindi natin alam kung placebo <laughs> or legit. Basta, I mean, never mind that it's magad, but hindi natin alam. At the same time, we don't know if it's advisable for them to mix uh, vaccines, diba? Let's say they got another uh, Sinopharm before, hindi natin, the data is still out on whether or not they could qualify for Pfizer and so on. So ngayon, they're in a dilemma. Hindi, na, <laughs> hindi nila alam kung totoo yung nakuha nila and so on. What's the advice? What's the best advice to them? Should they line up for another shot for another brand or should they wait out a certain cycle and then uh, take I mean, whatever, whatever they think they got? Oh, well, there's a more direct way of doing that and more concrete. It's called the serologic test. Okay. Mm. If you're given the, the vaccine and if it works, your antibody level should go up. Yeah, I see. Oh, okay. that's right. Okay. So oh, we did that actually. So before we gave the vaccine, when we thought you we were getting Pfizer, we did serologic tests of 3,500 healthcare workers. So we have data on that. And 22% were positive already. Yes, so, but, but wow. that, that violates your right against self-incrimination because that was a smuggled vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> so, baka naman pwede sila mag-sign muna ng confession tapos magpaserological <laughs> si, secret, din, secret din naman yung test. Eh. <laughs> 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 Dok, teka, balikan ko lang yung kanina. Nabagay ko kanina yung inactivated viruses, uh, uh, like for example, Sinovac. Uh, apparently, they, they have a broader, or they can uh, they can fight a broader range of uh, variants, uh, if I understand correctly, of yeah. COVID-19. On a theoretical basis, yes, of course. They, I don't know if it really works that way, but our, uh, science, our uh, researchers or uh, our scientists uh, said that the uh, the let's say the mRNA or the uh, uh, virus that were created uh, uh, yes. to mimic the, uh, the spike protein of the uh, virus, uh, the vaccines that were created to mimic the spike protein of the virus, just elicits a reaction to the spike protein. Specific to that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Specific to that. But the virus is spike, pro spike the spikes plus the body, the, mm -hmm. the wall mm -hmm. of the cell. Kung wala yun, wala na yung that part of the reaction that we can mount. So if you have an inactivated virus, it has all the parts, the, spike, the spikes, the, uh, the body, uh, and the, there are more proteins that the body can detect and more antibodies that it can produce. can produce antibody A for spike protein, antibody B for the cell wall no? or the, the other parts of the, the, the viral cell. No? So uh, the viral particle. So um, theoretically, uh, you have more antibodies, more types, more varieties of antibodies from in the inactiv inactivated virus. Yeah. But well, what, what about this? Uh, you know, uh, well, I, I don't know if you're in a position to answer this, no, but I'm sure you would understand. But some people are actually worried about the use of aborted fetuses in the making of some of these vaccines. Uh, is, is there any truth to that? We don't need to do that anymore, I think, in this day and age. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm so, yeah. So, uh, wala, there's no truth to those, uh, you know, theories. Sabi niya, anymore, baka dati ginagawa. Baka dati, oh. Dati sa cows, nalagay, di ba? Sa cows. Sa kabayo daw, sabi ng Pangulo. Sa kabayo, oh. Well, but, but, but doc, doc speaking of, uh, uh, let's say pregnant women, uh, or for that ma matter, uh, nursing mothers, what's the, what's the advice currently for them when it comes to lining up or not lining up for the vaccines? Uh, there's no data yet for that. Uh, they, they didn't include those in the studies. Yeah. Mm. So, so they're not with the vaccination. Yes. You are, but, they're advised against taking the vaccine. They, they are advised... Uh, it, it, it's not that it will kill them. No, it, okay. it's just that there's no information uh, ah. to support the uh, efficacy for them, no, or maybe mm. even the safety. Pero mababasa sila sa priority list natin, di ba? Yes. 
Yeah. What about the seniors, no? Yes, Who yes, that's a big, that's a good question. <laughs> yes, because Sinovac can only be administered up to, you know, people 59, 59 years of age. So, yeah. paano yung mga katulad ni... Yeah, oh, ako na lang. lang. <laughs> <laughs> AstraZeneca pwede. Mm. Yes, yes, because they have... AstraZeneca pwede. Eh, yes. hindi, Kaya pero si Doc Bay, ang, ang karamihan malamang na masusupply ay Sinovac, di ba? Yes. So the question is, will there be enough uh, for the seniors uh, if it's Astra or Pfizer? Sinopharm yata pwede, di ba? <laughs> okay. Pag, oh. sa, pag, pag, China. Pag, pag nag-apply, which we don't even know yet. Okay. Yeah. 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 Nag-apply na, nag-apply na. Nag-apply na. EUA. Okay. Well, do Ah, meron na kahapon, kahapon na nag uh, nag-confirm sa kahapon. Okay. Uh, well, Doc Gap, we won't ask you if he had any similar uh, side effects uh, as that reported by Montulfo for Sinopharm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, iba naman yung iba naman yung bakuna na kuha ninyo. Eh. Uh, Sinopharm 'yon. Oh, nga, Sinopharm nga. Sabi naman nila Sinopharm 'yon. Sabi nila. <laughs> okay, Doc Gap Ligaspi, sir, maraming salamat for joining maraming, us tonight. Maraming salamat po. Maraming you, salamat to everybody in PGH. People give hope, as you said. Maraming salamat po. Ingat po kayo. Thank you very much. Good night to everyone. Thank you. We're just going to a break, so please stay with us. The health department will recommend vaccinating health workers in Pasay City after the detection of the South African variant in the area. The Philippine Genome Center detected three cases of the more infectious South African COVID variant in Pasay City. DOH recommended to the president that we vaccinate uh, ito pong mga ating kababayan dito sa Pasay City. We will initially do this for the healthcare workers in Pasay City mm -hmm. uh, and then we will see if there are still enough vaccines to vaccinate the other uh, members of the community in Pasay City. Ngayon po, nilalabas ang spot test results within 24 hours pero hawa-hawa na po ang ating mga kapamilya. Kaya sana po mag-iingat po kayo. Welcome back to the Chiefs here on One News. We are now in the final stage of our conversation. Joining us now, Pasay City Mayor Imelda Calixto Rubiano. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Mayor. Hi, good evening, po. Magandang gabi sa inyo. Magandang gabi po. Magandang gabi po. Uh, Ma'am, maybe let's start with an update. Uh, kamusta po dyan sa Pasay, especially with regards to this new variant na na-report dyan? Opo, uh, dito po sa amin, ang Pasay nagkaroon ng 8,142 positive cases pero ang active na lang po is 519. We have 44 new cases at ang recovered naman po ay 7,410. We have 27 new recoveries at ang namatay po ay 213. Meron kaming dalawang namatay at ang amin pong uh, the contact trace, 71,042. At ang amin po na, na PCR test ay naging 14.82% na lumakpas pa po sa required ng DOH na 10% of the population. Hmm. 
Ma'am, ah, kasi ma ma oh, sa totoo lang ma'am, kinakabahan kasi yung maraming tao doon sa, sa mga balita coming from Pasay dahil unang-una eh nag-spike po yung uh, yung uh, yung nag-positive sa Pasay City at pangalawa, eh diyan nakita po yung bagong variant, yung South African variant. Uh, so is there reason to be concerned po with the numbers? Uh, I, I know you read out uh, a lot of uh, numbers kanina, pero I think that's uh, over the last uh, year eh, yung yung mga total numbers eh. Uh, ito pong okay. recent po eh, is there reason to be concerned with the current numbers? Oh. Ah, ito pong sinabi ko, ito po talaga yung update as of yesterday. Aba. At uh, talagang itong nag-start nag ng year, ang Pasay po ay second to the least na may pinakakonti na positive mm. cases sa buong NCR. Nasa datos po yan. Pero po, nung dumating ang February 12, talagang nag-spike ng 300%. Mm -hmm. Pero ang maganda po, sa tingin ko, uh, yung containment action po namin ay nagiging effective sa pagtutulungan namin po sa local government, pati na rin po nagpapasalamat ako sa tulong ng national government din po na talagang ngayon po napapababa na namin ang cases. Nung isang Nung isang araw, meron kami, nung isang araw, 103 ang new cases. Tapos po, kahap, kahapon, anong isa pang araw, naging 60. And then kahapon, 44 new cases okay. na lang po. Ano na. po yung At containment? At lang po, pababa na po. Um, pero ma'am, tumbok na po ba? Natumbok na po ba ang pinagmulan ng surge no, nitong nakaraang Pebrero? Kasi yun na nga po, no, hindi, hindi, nabigla na lang po ang lahat dahil napakaraming barangay na biglang ni-lockdown at napakaraming households talaga na nag-test positive. Pero ang tanong nga po ay ano po, po kaya ang pinagmulan noon? Ano naging sanhi? Oho, yung pong laboratories na nag-PCR test, nagkaroon po kami ng genome sequencing at nakita po dito, nung January 25 kasi, nung nagka-positive yung isang tao, nakita po at uh, dinaan po ng genome sa sequencing, nasabi po nila yung result na ito po ay South African virus. At uh, yan po nakita tatlo Tatlo po. At uh, inimbestigahan na rin po namin and before the feedback ng DOH, talagang ang amin pong uh, ginagawa, intensified din po talaga dahil nga tumataas, no? kahit wala pa yung feedback ng DOH. Dahil nung isang araw lang namin nalaman na merong South African variant. Pero po, ang ginagawa na namin, yung contact tracing namin, talagang pag ikaw na interface, wala ng 15-15 minutes na Tinitignan kami, kinukontact na namin yung F1, yun yung na-expose positive, F2, yung na-expose sa na-expose, at yung X, F3, exposed sa na-expose sa na-expose. Kaya po, lahat po yan, kinuntay namin, at na-contact trace, nasuswag test namin, at na-isolate po. Mayor, yung mga lugar na pinakamaraming cases, siya ba yung pinakamasisikip na area? Kasi marami kayo dyan na Talaga super secure pa, no? Yung pati yung pasukan, halos hindi na magkakain power. Saka patong-patong yung household, oh. one compound. Diyan ba yung pinakamarami? Kasi gusto ko malaman. Kasi parang napakahirap yata ang i-contain ng infection dyan, ano? Ano po yung ginagawa niyo? What goes into a granular lockdown? Kung ganun yung community, napakahirap. Talagang dikit na dikit yung mga parod. Oo, oh, sa amin po. Granular lockdown. O, oh, ang ginagawa po namin talaga, nilolocalize and that's community quarantine po namin. Initignan po namin ito by clusters. Kung sa isang bahay, merong cases na two or more, ilalockdown po yan. Or sa isang compound, or sa isang strip. At uh, ang pinakamarami po ay yung pinakamalaking barangay namin, yung barangay 183. Kaya lang po, yan ang barangay na isa lang na nilocalized and not community quarantine namin ang buong barangay. And the uh, 77 barangays with 210 households, yun po, iba-ibang barangay yun. Ang nakalockdown lang po doon ay households. Ang um, um, kabalik lang ako doon. So, ganun po ang ginagawa na. Uh, si, uh, uh, 
ang sinasabi niyo po ba ay yung pinagmulan ay yung South African variant na yun nga very highly transmissible? Yun ho ba sinasabi niyo? Na ng kumbaga po kasi na South African variant al yun. Ganun ho ba? Kasi po maki po kasi napapansin po namin at hindi lang sa Pasay, kahit sa ibang lugar na before ang mga swab test results nakukuha pa natin yan after a week or five days. Pero ngayon po, after 24 hours, nakukuha na. Pero po, nahahawa na ang madami kesa yung membro ng pamilya o yung doon sa opisina po. Okay. Uh, may nakapagsabi sa, sa amin na uh, uh, isa raw po marahil na dahilan, I think it was your health officer, no? Isa raw po marahil na dahilan kung bakit uh, kumalak bigla yung COVID dyan ay dahil nga po ang airport ay nasa Pasay. Uh, sa tingin niyo po ba, eh, factor po yun sa surge na naganap nitong February? But then again, the airport has always been there. Uh, I mean, so how could that have oh, been a factor? Oh, yes. oh, pero po kasi ang, ang mga factors po talaga sa aming uh, index ay yung pong nagtatrabaho outside of Pasay. Kasi pagka po sila pagpapasok at meron din silang mga laboratory test na ginagawa bago po kami na-inform, mga more than one to two days pa po. And isang factor na rin na nandito po kasi yung airport rin yung labas-pasok din ang mga tao pero meron namang protocol yan at uh, pati mga overseas worker na nagsistay din po sa amin dahil malapit ang airport. Dahil tumutulong din po kami sa ating mga overseas workers at gusto nating magkahanap po ay sila, magbuksan ang ekonomiya. Pero po, talagang ini-inspection yan at bago po mailagay doon sa mga hotels na isolation ang kanyang purpose or mga transient houses, talagang tinetest po muna yan. At kinakwarantine yan, dapat 14 days, nandun din po sila. Pero dahil nga po labas-pasok, maaaring Isang factor din po yun. Uh, Mayor, in the meantime... Na nakapunta ang, hmm. ang subs. Opo. Hmm. Mayor, in the meantime, kanina po, ang DOH was saying, you know, given na uh, tumataas ang number sa, sa Pasay, siguro kailangan either bilisan natin or unahin natin. I don't know what the accurate term is, but it seems to be pushing for uh, ma-expedite yung vaccination, yung start na vaccination program dyan sa Pasay. Ano po ba yung plano? I mean, was is, does this necessarily move the date forward for rolling out in Pasay? Alam nyo po ba I mean, what is the plan in the first place? Or talaga bang nandun na naman yung plan? Mag-uumpisa na ba talaga? Opo. Uh, kasi sa Pasay City po, uh, last September of last year, talagang nag, meron na po kami nilaan na pondo para makakuha po kami ng vaccine in case na meron nga po dumating. So, ngayon po, nakapag-enter na kami sa tripartite agreement at nakapag-roll uh, nakapag out po dito kanina mm. sa aming uh, Pasay City General Hospital ng pagbabakuna. At ang una po, para lang sa launching, ay tinarget sana isang daan muna, pero bukas po tuloy-tuloy na hanggang sa mga susunod na araw. Pero po, sa amin maganda ang turnout dahil po more than 100 po ang aming nabakunahan at masaya po ako dahil wala namang naging adverse effect. At uh, isa lamang na nagkaroon lang ng konting allergy pero nawala rin po agad. Kaya po tuloy-tuloy po talaga at kami ay uh, nakikiusap din sa mga health workers na samantalahin po nila itong bakunang ito kasi sila po ang priority A na talagang bibigyan at huwag po sanang sayangin para po alam naman natin na high risk ang ating mga health workers, pinubuwis ang kanilang buhay kaya kailangan po talaga sila ay mabakuna. Mayor, kayo po ba eh? Handa na po ba kayo sa kaling uh, magdesisyon ang presidente o ang IATF mag-recommend na mag-MGCQ na? At in fact, napag-uusapan na raw na baka raw ibalik na raw pati face-to-face -face classes no? uh, sa kaling tumuloy-tuloy na yung vaccine rollout. Kayo po ba sa tingin nyo makakahabol po ba kayo dun sa kaling mag-MGCQ? 
Oo. Uh, kami po sa Pasay, because of our data, sa tingin ko po, baka bigyan po sana kami pa ng two weeks para matignan na kami ng lahat ng sitwasyon upang magkaroon din po kami ng MGC. Two weeks from the end of March? Yung po, yung, kasi ah, uh... Yung po oh. yung inyo, uh, so mid-April mid ang gusto ninyo, mid-April. Oo, oh, kasi opo, ako naman po ay talagang gusto ko talagang magbukas na ng ekonomiya pero because of this uh, South Africa variant na nandito at tumaas po talaga kami na positive cases na dating nandun po kami sa pangalawang pinakamababang cases sa buong Metro Manila, sa tingin ko po, kailangan mo pag-aralan na igi ang situation ng aming mga positive cases dito at mabigyan pa kami ng panahon upang uh, kami po ay makahabot sa MGCQ. Pero kung ganito po ang nangyayari na talaga ang laki na ng binababa ng aming mga COVID cases from February 12 dahil talagang nakokontain at tama po ang ginagawang action at pagtutulungan ng national government and local government, sana po makahabot din kami. Sa potential na pagkalat po niyang South African variant kasi mas mas deadly daw yung it's more virulent eh. May may pangangailangan pa ba kayo pang the national government? Kasi no nagumpisa yung isang variant yung UK. Humingi kayo ng tulong sa national government. Sa isang ngayon may dagdag pa ba kayong kailangan from the national government? Ah uh, ni Opo. Uh, ang South African variant according to the study at the DOH po na in-explain, ito po ay mabilis, mabilis kumalat, pero po hindi naman siya nagpapakita na ang COVID ay yung magiging uh, severe. malala. Mm -hmm. Opo, severe. Kaya naman po, pero tatandaan sana ng mga mamamayan na kahit hindi severe ito, pero kung kakalat ng kakalat, pwede nating mahawa yung mga senior citizens natin at yung mga mamamayan na merong mga kasalukuyang sakit na pwedeng maging sanhi ng pagkakaroon niya ng COVID na maging severe. Kaya po, ngayon, umingi kami ng tulong sa national government na yung aming mga ni-lockdowns na mga households at isang balanggay, umingi talaga kami ng tulong ng uh, uniform men upang mabantayan ito kasi iba rin po talaga pag visible sila talaga yung mga tao mas takot at nag i talaga sa bahay. At yung mga contact tracers na dagdag para po mas mabilis pa namin ma-action at kung ano na ang ginagawa namin action at sa mga isolation centers. Mayor, balikan ko lang po yung tanong ni Luchi kanina na kung uh, sa, sa inyong pananaw, eh, itong uh, spike sa Pasay City is driven by uh, the South African variant. Just for clarity lamang po, eh, kasi sabi nga natin, eh, tatlo pa lamang yung nadidiscovery ng South African variants dyan sa Pasay City. And uh, that's a pretty low number if you're looking at that being the reason for the spike in, uh, in cases. Eh. So my question po to you is this, eh, uh, lato ba ng pinadala nyo for genome sequencing na, na samples ay eh, bumalik na at tatlo lamang yung nakita or ito pa lang po yung unang bugso na mga resulta na inaasahan ninyo at meron pang may inaasahan pa kayo mga, pa, mga papasok na resulta? Tama po sir, ito lang po yung una at tuloy-tuloy po po ang kinukuha nila para magkaroon ng genome sequencing ang mga uh, results dito po sa lungsod na pasat. Mm. So hindi pa ho natin alam uh, well actually so hindi pa natin alam kung uh, kung ano nga kung uh, mas marami pa talaga o significant yung bilang ng uh, South African variants diyan sa sa inyong siyudad. Opo, kaya lang dahil do sa nature niya na talagang mapapansin namin that hindi lang sa Pasay po ito ha, hmm. talagang mabilis kumalat hmm. sa pamilya, do sa community at siyempre po dahil ang Pasay hindi po kami tumigil ng mass testing. Talagang mass testing po ang ginagawa namin. Kaya siyempre, pag marami po kayong natitest, marami rin kayong madidiscover na meron pala na lalo na yung mga asymptomatic. Ah. Ay, Mayor, linawin ko lang po yung dun sa tanong din ni Ed. Uh, given na unang bugso pa lang to, uh, and we're waiting for more, for more results to come, Ilang days po ba ang, uh, ang lag uh, mm -hmm. between the, 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 the time the data arrives and the, the actual number of cases that we suspect? Ilang, ilang araw po ang behind ang data? Intayan. 
mga 15, 15 days po. Okay. Doon sa base sa nangyari. Ganon katagal mm, pala. No? Pa. Kasi, may, kasi, <laughs> G, kasi, G, kasi may genome sequencing because it's not just oh. about the testing. Kaya po ba matagal? Opo, oh, oh, ganon po. Mm. Doon po sa na, nauna, yun po ang bilang ko. Mga 15 days or less. Kalating buwan pa lang. <laughs> Mula doon sa nauna. So, hindi pa rin po naman nangangahulugan na yung kumakalat ngayon ay South African variant. No? Maaring, maaring hindi naman. In other words, maaring yung, yung bilang ngayon na napakataas ay yung dati pa rin original COVID. No? Pwede rin naman yun pa rin. So, UK hindi variant. <laughs> As a result of the South African variant. Oh, pwede rin po kasi may mga ibang factors din po. Katulad ng nasabi ko, nagmamass testing talaga kami. Kaya nakikita yung madami rin cases po. At uh, dahil gusto ko naman po talaga kay asymptomatic sila na mai-isolate. Kasi po, ka, lalo na yung asymptomatic, walang nararamdaman. Tapos nagahasig po sila ng virus at least na-isolate na rin po namin. At uh, yung pong isang factor na nandoon nga po nagtatrabaho sa labas, pwede rin nakakakuha doon. Tapos pag umuwi po sila sa pamilya nila, hindi nila alam, wala silang nararamdaman at wala din result. So yung pamilya nila, pumupunta rin sa mga iba-ibang lugar, pwede rin nakawa sila. Tapos baka ma-spread din nila yung virus. Isang factor din po yun. And then, yung nasabi niyo po because Pasay City is a travel hub. Nandito po yung MRT, nandito yung LRT, nandito yung airport. Meron pa kami ferry and bus stations. Pwede rin po din ang dami-daming labas-pasok sa lungsod ng Pasay. At ang pinakamahalaga talaga po na kailangan kahit anong variant pa po ito, we must observe strictly the minimum health protocol. Kasi kahit po uh, South Africa variant siya, pero kung ginagamit talaga natin ng tama ang face mask, face shield, naguhugas ng kamay, tapos po um, yung ating physical distancing na one meter and above at yung pong ventilation na kung saan ka lagi nag i na napakalaking tulong. And I've heard and I've learned that 95% pwede po tayong makaiwas talaga sa COVID-19. Mayor, kumusta na yung ekonomiya ng city ninyo? I mean, I'm, I'm sure it reflects the economy in Metro Manila, no? Nakaka-recover na ba kayo? Saka this is collection time na. Start na ng collection ng mga fees, mga business fees. Kumusta na po siya ngayon? Opo, sa totoo po, sa aming business uh, permits, talaga pong marami rin nagsara at marami rin na wala ng trabaho. Kaya po talagang, I think, hindi lang po sa Pasay, kasi nag-uusap din kami ng mga ibang local chief executives, talagang bumaba po ang aming collection. And uh, nandito po ako talaga na makikiusap din sana sa mga mamamayan, lalo na sa mga tagapasay, na sana po, please do your share. Responsibility po natin na gawin ang minimum health protocol para po makabalik na rin tayo sa ating normal na buhay. Maingatan natin hindi lang ang ating sarili, kung hindi, ingatan po natin ang ating pamilya at ating komunidad. Kasi po kahit anong ganda ng plano ng lahat ng namumuno, pag hindi po namin nakuha ang support at pakikisa ng mga mamamayan, hindi po ito magiging successful. Mm -hmm. Mayor, uh, baka, baka sakali lamang po, uh, inyo po bang uh, na-backtrace itong tatlong uh, nagkaroon ng uh, South African variant? In the sense na nakita ho ba ninyo kung ang uh, mga kasong ito eh, na, na nagkaroon ng impeksyon yung buong pamilya o maraming members ng households yung nagkaroon ng COVID and so on down the line? Kung baga, uh, may, may nakita ho ba kayong mga patterns? Opo, uh, inimbestig hindi investigahan pa rin namin pero naimbestigahan namin yung iba na sila pong tatlo ay recovered na. Yung isa matagal-tagal na naka-recover, yung isa po naka-recover nung isang araw, magkasunod po sila, at yung isa po naka-recover na kahapon. At ang uh, advice din ng DOH at ang amin po na ginawa ay binalikan po namin sila at uh, upang ma-reswap 
pati po yung mga na-expose sa kanila mm -hmm. upang members, makasigurado uh, mm -hmm. po tayo. Okay. Mayor Imelda Calixo Rubiano of Pasay City. Mayor, maraming salamat po for joining us tonight. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat po. po. At ingat po. Maraming salamat. Mag-iingat po kayo. Thank you po. Thank you. Salamat po. And that will be all for this Tuesday edition of The Chiefs. We hope what was discussed here will keep the conversation going. I'm Adeline Gao. I'm Ami Pamintuan of the Philippine Star. I'm Luchi Cruz Valdez of News 5. I'm Robbie Alampay and we are One News.